Have you ever driven a car? Have you ever worked a full-time Monday to Friday job? Well, even if you haven't, I mean, chances are you probably know what these things are. But the fact is that these things haven't always been around. I mean, it's only been, what, 100 years that we started driving cars and working full-time Monday to Friday. Well, how did this all start? I have two words for you. Henry Ford, welcome to Vlogs of Knowledge. So this episode is going to be a great one because we're talking about Henry Ford, the automobile pioneer that radically changed the way America works in the early 20th century. So let's take a look at this man, Henry Ford, and see what he's all about. In 1863, on a small farm in the United States, a man was born. But it wasn't just any man, I mean it was Henry Ford, the man who would soon revolutionize the American world. Ever since he was a little kid, it seemed like his life was all planned out for him. I mean, he was supposed to work on the farm, then take over the farm, and eventually pass it along to his sons and grandsons. The only problem was that Ford, he didn't like the farm life. He didn't want for his life to just be working on a farm. He wanted something more. A few years later, in 1879, he left his family, he left the farm, he went to Detroit to work as a machinist. There, he learned how to work the steam engine and other kinds of machinery. A few years later, he left that company and he joined up with the Edison Illuminating Company. And yes, if you're wondering, that is Thomas Edison's company. Because of his skill, he was quickly promoted to a chief engineer, which gave him both the time and the money to focus on his personal projects and do some brainstorming of his own. It wasn't too long before he came up with the idea of a car, but back then he called it a self-propelled vehicle. And after a few years of brainstorming and trying things out, he eventually came up with his first product ever, the Ford Quadricycle. Now this wasn't much, I mean this was essentially a horse carriage but without the horses. But keep in mind that this was a huge step forward because at the time people were not yet ready to think about automobiles as something that could be practical and accessible to the average American. Now later on, because of complications with his previous company, he left that company, he found a few investors and he made his own company. It was called the Ford Motor Company. And that's really where he started building cars. I mean, that's where he built his first race car, an 80 plus horsepower vehicle that he personally test drove on a frozen lake, reaching a top speed of 146 kilometers per hour and breaking the existing land speed record of the time. Great achievements for Ford. But that wasn't enough for Ford. I mean, it still took way too long to build and was still expensive to build. So he made it his personal mission to provide a car that was both cheap and accessible to the average American. In 1908, he succeeded on that mission with his famous Model T. The Model T was a simple car. It was the first car with a steering wheel on the left, which every single other motor company copied afterwards. And of course, it was cheap. It only cost $825 in 1908. Today, that would be about $21,000. Now, if you're thinking, hey, that's not so cheap. Well, keep in mind that this was the first time that a car was commercially available for Americans. This was a new technology. I mean, when technologies are new, they're usually a lot more expensive. So $21,000 for a car, especially in its infancy, is a very good deal. But for Ford, that still wasn't enough. He continuously looked for ways to make it cheaper and faster to build. And Ford, he was a smart guy. When he wanted something, he usually found creative plans to get it. And he managed to succeed in that mission in some very interesting ways. So here's how. First, he applied the assembly line style of production to producing cars. I mean, before that, a car would take way too long to build and would be something that required a lot of skill. So essentially what he did is he broke it down into simple tasks that pretty much anybody could do. And the consequence of that is that you don't need skilled workers to produce a car. Since you made it so simple, anybody could do it. And also everybody's doing the same task over and over again. And when somebody does the same task over and over again, they tend to get pretty good at it and they tend to do it very fast, which increases productivity. And that was Ford's goal. He also offered his workers a flat $5 per workday salary, which was almost double what everybody else was offering. This was because he wanted to get the best designers and the best engineers to come work for him. And of course, if you pay your workers much more than everybody else, they're going to be much happier to come work for you and they're going to probably work better and faster, which again increases productivity, exactly what Ford wanted. And finally, he changed the work week, making it from Monday to Friday, which was a lot less than what they worked previously. I mean, previously they would work six, sometimes seven days. He made it to just five short days, eight hours a day for a total of 40 hours per week. Now, this made people much more happier because they didn't have to come to work six, seven times a week. They would just have to come to work five days a week and they were shorter days. So when the workers are happier, again, they work better and faster, which increases productivity. 
But Ford had another plan as well. He thought that if he gave people more time off, they're going to have more time to go out and buy stuff, which stimulates the economy. And when the economy is stimulated, well, productivity is again boosted, which is all what Ford wanted. And by then, Ford's Model T had made millions of sales, and it broke the all-time sales record and stood strong for 45 years. I mean, the Model T was so popular that by the 1920s, most Americans had learned to drive on a Model T. And now Ford was known for something more than just his cars. He was known for providing attractive salaries, treating his workers with respect, and stimulating the economy. He had become a household name, and for good reason too. By the 1940s, his company still remained strong amongst all the competition within motor companies. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said of his health. In 1947, he unfortunately died of internal bleeding. His company was then left over to his grandson, Henry Ford II. Ford was one of the important people of the 20th century. I mean, he really popularized the assembly line style of production and started corporate America. During his time, everybody knew who he was, and not just for his cars. But it wasn't all good. I mean, Ford was known to be an anti-Semite with a strong dislike for Jews. And it was so strong that Hitler had a life-size painting of Ford in his office because he thought that Ford's views on Jews were to be respected and admired. But that's for another video. With that being said, thanks for watching. Alright, that was it for this week's episode of Vlogs of History. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this episode and that maybe you've learned something. If you did, please leave a like, share it to a friend, and subscribe to be notified when the next episode comes out. Remember that these episodes come out every single Monday, and if you've missed the previous one, there's a link on your screen. If not, there's a link in the description. Make sure to check it out. As always, I'm your host, Darius Cost, and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm very active. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I will see you all next week.